Because you said start it. That's why. Weren't you having issues recording with that phone, though? Yeah, don't worry about it. Again, it's fine. Signal. Awesome. That's not, it's not up there. Don't worry, but guys. I don't see I'm myself, so I can't look at my good self. It's, it's good. I can't even yeah. see the camera. Yeah, screen? You'll see it later. <laughs> yeah, you're what probably you you're probably all in screen. We're just going to go with it and see if this works. I'm going to snuggle close to Nat, Matt so I can to see Nat. Mm. To mm. Nat. <laughs> What's up, guys? Hi. Uh, Welcome to the Rhino Vision Podcast, episode de. Part de. So what we're going to talk about only today is Actually, Destiny 2. Yeah. I'm just Let's kidding. not. I'm kidding. Ready. <laughs> okay, Destiny. So it was Holy shit. shit the balls. servers are still online. The game is still amazing. And what? I am still horrible. It, it w- does kind of shock me, though. You yeah. know, on a serious note, the fact that Bungie has been smart enough to leave those servers up and running is That's, actually impressive. On Destiny 1? Yeah. 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 Oh, really? The I didn't server, know that the servers were still I've been so playing gone. it. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Like, I was totally we, kidding about it. No, seriously. <laughs> yeah, the oh. servers are still up. And, like, I was actually kind of surprised how many people were there. Yeah. Hmm. I went to what, what were the play, the reef, the tower, and the hall of iron. I think is what it's called, and all of them are full of people. Hmm. Nice. So it was just fascinating. Just... It goes to show you that we're not the only ones who are like, "Fuck you, Destiny Two. You smell like garbage." <laughs> right. <laughs> but the Forsaken and is Isengard. Uh, I don't uh, care uh, enough. <laughs> so Tokyo what Game Show plan? happened this week. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know anything about it. Oh yeah. By so the way, I'm to... uh, I'm Ryan. I'm Lion. He's Jay. He's Matt. It's Matt. He's hiding behind his microphone. Are you concerned if the camera's running or not? <laughs> <laughs> Are you alive? <laughs> well, perfect. So, as I was saying, uh, Tokyo Game Show happened this week. There's a couple of new things. And <laughs> to get Matt on the topic to start with, uh, <laughs> Matt, did you watch the uh, Project Resistance trailer? No. For the new Resident Evil game? No. So, there's a new game coming out. It is a outbreak style type game. Yep, just what we thought it would be. Yep. It's the way I looked at it is it's like a mixture between like the old Resident Evil outbreaks and like World War Z now. Not with like hordes, but it's a slow paced four player co op where you have to get through uh, like levels and everything. The benefit that I saw in the second gameplay trailer they released is that there's a fifth player who runs the room. Hmm. And can take over zombies after a certain point. Can take over Mister X, lay traps didn't and they, everything to try to stop you from getting out. Didn't that they kind of do something like that? Six. Yeah, yep. yep. Where you could play as the Ustinak. but it was an yep. entirely different game mode. Right, yeah. right. So it's essentially just like a. You could say it's just like a. It's four players get out, and then one person gets to try to stop you from getting out. But no, they they had like, like an them. actual during story gameplays. You could play as some of the zombies. Like you could have uh, random um, people around the internet. On, I don't know about that in Resident Evil Six. I know that that was a, that's a feature in Dying Light. Hmm. In Dying Light, you take control of the, um, the stalkers, stalkers, whatever they're called, uh, and at night you just spawn into what somebody who's playing in a game, and it's nighttime, and take over the most powerful enemy in that particular game, and just go chase people around. Hmm. It's pretty terrifying. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Good but stuff. I am glad to see that um, Capcom is trying to branch out. Uh, I think if they if they do this right and keep up with it, because at this particular junction, we're all entirely well aware that when it comes to a successful multiplayer game, you have to make sure you keep up with it. I mean, just look yeah. at the most successful, like like Rainbow Six Siege. They have released content on the regular monthly, and that it attributes to just the fact that they are like the most <laughs> successful, one of the most successful online gameplay games ever. At this particular junction. <laughs> you can't get comfortable with us up here? Well, I'm trying to stay in camera. Nate's head is always blocking me. <laughs> I am leaning back. Hold yes, on. this is not... He's usually, like, right there. Now you're blocking him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to avoid. Oh, Whatever. Nate that either case. speaks in the camera or... <laughs> yeah, this will work. I'll just sit like this It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Sorry, Matt, you were saying. I, I don't even remember, so good yes. job. Rainbow Six is successful? I don't know. Yeah. Mostly. Things. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, well, you guys, uh, who here has started Borderlands 3 since we talked about it last time? 30 minutes. I nice. think I'm the only one. Tell us about the 30 minutes you played. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they've improved a lot of game features. There's now weapon swap modes where, like, each individual weapon has two different fire modes. Uh, there's sliding, like, dash slides. It's pretty cool. There's climbing up on top of things. Uh, Did you say there's a co-op mode and co-op yes. mode? The loot is now player unique you can select either player unique or you know everyone has to fight over whatever gets uh what was that i tell you oh yeah neat little uh, we've talked about this with a few other games the polish uh i had a revolver and i fired like two shots he would only reload two shots nice 
That's good. I I really appreciate those kind of uh, situations. It's the small things you didn't know you wanted. Well, right. And it's like in, in previous games, they've done a good job of making it so even revolvers were clip-based. Because mm-hmm. I remember playing... Oh, yeah, with um, the little like, quick feed. Yep. Yeah, it's more of a, like, you would just replace the entire drum Cylinder. from the side of it and just put in a new one. And that yeah. was, that kind of, like, bypassed the situation, because it is something I've always been a kind of a stickler on. And the only times it matters is if reload speed is, like, an actual variable effect that can be changed over time. Because then it's like, you have to make it make sense. That kind of thing. Yeah. And there's been plenty of games where it's like, I can't remember which one. I think I think World War Z uh, has this thing where when you're reloading, you reload two shots in a shotgun at a time, um, or something like that. There's a game that does that. It just seems so wonky of a mentality. Doom did it. Yeah. Doom three. Load two shells at a time. But... Right, <clears throat> but you don't see him load two shells at a time. <clears throat> it so just happens. Yeah, it's just one of those. He just grabs shells and slaps them at the right. side of the gun, and they just go. You just yell at the shells and they jump in the gun. I love Doom Three. I love that game. So but yeah, I've I've yet to play enough to form a full opinion. Although I'm <laughs> sure I'm gonna love it. Well, right, it's Borderlands. And this <laughs> yeah. is the first time Borderlands has gone through a entire overhaul. Like they looked at so many different things and said, "All right, how can we make this different?" I mean, everything from there being three versions of your action skill. Yep. Depending on what you want to do and what you want to specialize in, so it's not just like gaining the skills along the way, like. <laughs> One of my favorite things about 2, and uh, I think the pre-sequel did this a little bit, um, was the mentality that depending on how you choose to upgrade your action skill, it would act certain ways. Uh, I know Nate can agree with the mentality of, I mean, when it comes to playing Axton, do you want to throw on a turret that has missile pods? Do you want to throw on a turret that has another turret? Do you want to throw a turret that can stick to walls? Do you want to throw a tur- turret that nukes the entire area when you <laughs> throw it? I haven't gotten to that one. Yeah, and there's <laughs> options, but you know you can't get all the options unless you have a good enough build to survive true Vault Hunter mode, which surprisingly enough, my Athena build for um, pr- uh, pre-sequel has managed to go through a, like a quarter of true Vault Hunter mode without dying. Nice. Which is a shock. Because yeah. The Aspis is actually remarkably helpful in that particular regard. Uh, speaking of the action skills, they did, for one, they let you get it at level two, so you don't have to play through a good portion of the game before trying out your character. Right. Um, and they've also added multiple action skills, where it, it's not just, like, I have this one thing and I can augment that. It's like, no, I can have two or three different things. I think you can have at most two, but you're going to replace your ability to throw grenades. Hmm. But you got a lot of action skills that'll throw grenades, so... Mm. Interesting. Yeah, that's how it is with Zane. I don't know about the other ones yet. So, like with Flak, basically when you upgrade them, you basically choose which pet you want to do, and you can switch it yep. out later. You can either have L one be this pet and R one be this pet, but you have no grenade tossing ability. But maybe that pet can toss out grenades when it kills something. Mm. And later on, you're like, I don't want to use this pet. Switch it out so that L one is a different pet. As long as you have the points to do that, yeah. Exactly. So I like the level of. Um, it's it's one of the things that I've always liked about Borderlands is that. Depending on your play style, you can completely rebuild a character to the point where they look, act, and feel different. Mm-hmm. And that is such an awesome idea. I mean, I didn't realize when I was playing in pre-sequel, when I was playing as Athena, that I would I would go for the elemental build, but it just became such a useful and versatile thing. Because I'm one of those people that just runs and shoots. Uh, the, the melee setup, you know, I don't melee much, but, you know, being able to make your melee that much more powerful and then the other one is set up for more co-op and I don't have any friends yeah. so that's not really a situation I was tempted <laughs> to but I th- you were already at like level 6 or like 30 something like yeah. I don't want to grind out a new character right now right. why not with the third game right around like next week I don't want to start a new sure. character yeah sure understandable <laughs> you know I'm looking forward to starting it and I hope that it uh, I hope it is like a turning point for this particular thing because I'd hate for Borderlands to fall into the mentality of the rule of threes like so many other games have hmm. and just die Well, it's out. getting great reviews. Like, it's oh, like good. 9 out of 10s, 88s out of 100s. They're saying it's fantastic. I, wa- I want 2K to be able to realize that your money's not all wrapped up in your stupid sports games. There are You can do other things. You have one of the largest and most diverse video game companies in the world covering every single continent. And each one is a freestanding like game development company that is larger than most companies. So just fucking spread it out and do it. 
You heard it. Spread it out and do it. Yeah. I mean, and that goes into, like, what I heard about stuff being talked about for PlayStation 5. <coughs> which is going to be here, so. Yeah, you wanted to talk a little bit on that, didn't you? Did yeah. they announce more of the... Uh, I didn't hear um, anything, but... There wasn't so much an announcement, so much as um, somebody went over what uh, the president of Sony, uh, both the actual president, president of Sony, whatever his name is, uh, in Japan, as well as um, our CEO here in America, about the PlayStation 5 and the fact they're focusing on backwards compatibility. They have decided that they are not going to design the system to be a stream-only system. Good. And that was Thank decided God. upon by the CEO here in America because the bottom line is is that it's still a well-known fact that America has the worst internet in the world. Yep, yep period. It's true. Per capita, really? per game. Yeah. Yeah. Our sheer amount of gamers compared to our internet capability is the worst in the world. From what I've heard, Australia is the worst, but I mean... You, you also have to think about how... Many, okay, uh, people yeah, are yeah. so spread out, too. Like, and we're such a large country, it's hard to get to those areas. And huh. here's another fun thing. In Australia, it's illegal to buy rated M games, so they have to buy them offline. Oh. Yep. There are no... There are very few video game sit- stores there because a lot of that stuff is still... There's legal shit for that. Hmm. So the PlayStation 5 will not be a stream-only service because considering how many people in America play not only competitively, but would... And there was a lot of differentiation on this. Um, if you want to look up the video, it was on Game Ranks. Um, the guy had a lot of really cool things to say about what he inferred. And a lot of this is, again, just speculation because Sony has come out and said a few things, how they want to focus on their definition of hardcore gamers, which may differ, differ from our definition. Yep. I mean, I consider a lot of us, except for Ryan, hardcore gamers because of the fact that that's what we do with all of our time. Yeah. I was waving at the camera. We're bored. We play some games. That's not as me, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is that what consumers or like whatever what the companies view as hardcore gamers are the people who buy everything and literally buy every game. So their definition of a hardcore gamer is Ryan, the yeah. one who will buy everything but never play it. Yep. Because they don't care about whether or not he plays it. They care yep. about whether or not he buys it. They got that initial sale. That's all they care about. But I like to try to play it first. Judging but. by what was said in this um, in this statement as well as in the video from Game Ranks, uh, he kind of pointed out the fact that Sony did mention that <clears throat> with this mentality of focusing on hardcore gamers – they are going to cut back on the amount of individual long-winded single-player titles like God of War, like Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh. But yeah. here's the thing. They're going to pull back on them, but they are going to double their budget mm. and hold them to a higher standard. Okay. So that means when these games come out, they are going to be through the roof worth of like Bigger, production better. value length because these companies are going to realize... We have to make this last. Yeah. Yeah, this one game can't just be like, finish it and you're done. You have to stick with this game. Right. Well, they've had, I mean, since of. since God of War and uh, like Horizon came out, Spider-Man was a big, like those. Those are the three they mentioned. Yeah, like the big ones that they announced basically at E3 yep. last year where they had fo- basically four games. They were like, we're going to talk about Spider-Man, uh, Ghost of Shinomura, or how the fuck you say that, uh, Last of Us 2, and uh, Death Stranding. Those are the ones that they were like, that's it. Death Stranding? What? Never heard of it. You want to talk about it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that that'll be a running gag every time I want to talk about it. Yeah. But they were like, we're going to talk about these four games. Everyone's like, that's ridiculous. Why would you only talk about four games during an E3 presentation? And they came out, and yeah, the presentation was kind of meh, but you also got some of the best gameplay stuff. And then luckily they showed us Resident Evil 2 at that point uh, that year as well. But then they went, we don't care anymore. We're not even going to show up for E3. And they didn't. And they still beat everybody. <laughs> Well, it's still the mentality, and that even amplifies the entire thought process behind we're going to spend a whole lot more time giving a shit about our games. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to some of these game companies that do that. Like, Kojima has always done that. Mm -hmm. He's just poured so much into his games, whether it be storyline-wise, gameplay-wise. And he's only got to make one type of game, and that's Metal Gear. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing, it's just he's never got to do anything different. Yeah. (laughs) And now that he's off on his own... I mean, he has the chance. And that doesn't mean that this is going to limit uh, the indie franchise. They're still focusing a lot on um, <coughs> streaming. And they're not going to go the route of, like... Um, the Stadia? A, yeah, the Stadia or Microsoft's one that's coming out. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, Whatever it's called. But there is, the name of it they now. both have one going on. And even Nintendo is looking into it. Basically a way to just 
um, create a version of the Switch where you just attach the actual screen part to a controller and can go anywhere. Well, and Sony's already been doing it with PlayStation Now. Exactly. I mean, we've, they've already leave. started it. <laughs> PlayStation Now like that, but they are well aware of, because of the whole internet thing I brought up that hardware is still a big deal to us American gamers. We would rather have the system than hope to God that you can connect to an internet source and just have your controller. Because the future of gaming is that all you go and buy is the controller and the subscription to like your PlayStation. But the latency and everything behind even yep. Stadia. Like, I mean, I've seen it. There's been reports, and it works fairly well. But then there was one person who, not this week at TGS, like a couple weeks ago, maybe it was PAX, where they were like, I played Doom, Doom Eternal on it, and it felt great. But there was just that little bit of latency where, unfortunately, I didn't feel like I was doing as much as I could. Yeah. And it's, I mean... And for people and, who play professionally or multiplayer... Oh, I mean, that'll, I mean that, that that's not a professional thing. I mean, you it's 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 that. definitely a casual gamer thing. I see the appeal. With the Nintendo Switch is what gave me that appeal to be able to take things every, anywhere I go. I mean, I take my control out of my backpack and I load up my fucking iPad and there I go. I get to play Assassin's Creed wherever I want. Yeah. Sweet. I wonder what the kind of breakdown is for the people that like that, whereas the people are like, no, I I prefer to sit at home in my comfy chair and play games. Well, I'm well, sure. with the, yeah. the, one of the latter because... Yeah. I have a job. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. A job if I'm leaving my house, it's for work. work. <laughs> yeah, I go home to play video games. I'm not and going relax. to the fucking library or like these commercials where it's like, go sit on a bench in the park and play your video games. Fuck you. Why go to the park at that point? <laughs> no, I would do it. Well, there are birds, I'm outside, and people, I'm and with nature. Things. And by the park, I mean in my garage where I could just sit there and do nothing. Right. <laughs> you know, nature. But think about if you did if you did go camping, you're like, you guys want to play some fucking like Smash Brothers, and we just pull up like no, a fucking. I want to go camping. Oh, fuck yeah, I, I, I'm a very like <laughs> compartmentalized All right, person. This bad is example. dedicated for this. Bad example. No, it's actually <laughs> a good example. It's just you know, it just shows that, the, that different the different mentalities. Well, mentality. right, yeah. right. And I mean that's that's why like the future of gaming maybe, but it's years down the road before that becomes yeah. something that PlayStation has said that this is not their generational mentality. Their generational mentality is figuring out how to perfect everything for after this next 10 years. When, and that, I was going to say, you think about how long a generation lasts. The PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 were the largest genera- the longest yep. generations. And we're in, what, year 6 or 7 Ooh, of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox? Like, when they came out? Like, like we, th- we talk about it all the time, actually. It'll be, a, it'll be a nine-year lifespan by the time they yeah. release the 5. And by that point, think about where everything's going to be. And then you know? Sony wants the PlayStation 5 to last just as long, and that's why it's backwards compatible to the 4. That's why that's it so operates. That's, that's why it operates in every single um, screen resolution and can match any single screen that it will be able to be connected to, including 4K and anything else. It still has. It will still have the capability for 3D TVs, even though 3D TVs are dead. They're dead. Yeah, that didn't take. That it was didn't a last stupid long. idea. Yeah. yeah. There was only one or two that I liked. It's neat, but after a while, I I just sort of like zone out and like I don't even care if it's 3D. I just at that point, watch. you should stop wasting time on something as dead as 3D and start worrying about how can you make a excuse me how can you make a movie a VR situation. Yes, that's that is the next step. Without throwing up. <laughs> no, that's just the thing. You just who cares? Just throw up. Yeah, if you're gonna spew. Spewing and the funny thing is, the technology exists. You get it's just expensive up. and unnecessary because you have to take care of the entire environment. The only thing that can be in the environment is the camera. Yeah, you right. can't have set hands, which means filming things like action scenes is impossible. It'd be difficult for sure. Because you'd have to have one of those global cameras, and those things are they're terrifying for <laughs> one. Um, but then on top of that, they would pick up everything everywhere because you can't stop somebody from turning all the way around and looking to wherever the fucking like director would be sitting there just like uh, right <laughs> praying over the script <laughs> <laughs> Nate how are you what you look bored always you tired always yeah what are you playing right now always okay <laughs> <laughs> what's the new magic coming out uh, the new set is Throne of Eldrin. It's kind of a fairy tale set, as far as oh, you game. mentioned that. Yeah, I'm really excited about I'm it. I'm excited about it because there's a, it's just all fairy tale shit and just like gilded goo, like like grim fairy tale type shit or yep. brothers okay. grim shit. Remember, I don't know anything about uh, fairy tales. Fairy tales. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> completely oblivious. Who <Who's> Cinderella? <laughs> Fuck they you, Disney. Have the glass slippers. Uh. That bitch. <laughs> Who um, wears a glass slipper? It just seems somebody who wants that, to right destroy now, their feet. I'm still in Destiny, and I might hop into Dauntless, but other than that, nothing else. Dauntless? Which one's yeah, Dauntless? So you mean the, the, the online that's, multiplayer? That's, the mon- that's uh, Monster, Monster Hunter. Hunter with Fortnite skin. Right. I tried that for like a half a second. And I kept getting kicked. 
Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, can't find a server. Well, that's the, the worst part is that we jumped on it when it first came out. Yeah. And get on it. Th- there's when it comes to games that are entirely multiplayer, you kind of got to back <laughs> off and wait. <laughs> for them to figure out their server Expect mentality. there to be an issue day one. But yeah, I'm curious to see what you think about it because as a free game, and I'm always, I've always been curious every time I stumble across a free game, everything from Smite to, you know... Oh, I love Smite. Smite was pretty fun. God. To Fortnite, things like that. I mean, if it's free, I'm why curious. Not? Because Give it a shot. Why not? What do you got to lose? Right. I already have one heavy frustration with that game. I cannot change the control scheme. Oh, oh no. Like, no matter what, to the like, hack and slash, it's like square and triangle. And how I play is R1, R2. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bloodborne controls and like yeah. Dark Souls controls. And you then can't you change might them. not enjoy Greedfall. Yeah. You might be able. I mean, I haven't checked to see if you but can change it. But the funny thing is, is like. Ah, uh, no, you can't. It's just a layout. But, but here's the yeah. thing about Greedfall compared to a game like Dauntless. When you're playing Dauntless, it's a third person's perspective, and it's like right here the whole time, and you have. And with like that, you're you're doing it for that reason of being able to check your surroundings. You see a guy here, I can act quicker. Dauntless when I or not uh, Daunt, but uh, Greedfall when I was watching you play, it goes it's from orbital camera. Mm-hmm. It goes here to here. Yeah, yeah, and, and I you love see that. the whole field, and that's like something I would be okay with because that's how you play Fable. Okay, once and you like, get the opportunity to take everything in, like, it gives you the tact- to, it gives you the tactical advantage. But, like, much like Fable. but when that like, it's, yeah. I guess it's just like a visual trigger to me. It's like okay, now I know it's like these are my buttons instead of like right, camera right behind me. These are my buttons. Okay, right. and that like since I can't change that, that bothers the shit out of me. But again, with the way out here camera, it's like I have a different mindset. I can hop in the game in this direction in this way, and then it's like, hmm. well, I'm I might be a little upset, but overall, this is how like the camera is telling me I have to rethink my strategy of even my layout of my buttons. But I'm, I'd be fine with that. That's uh, you think I'm, that differentiates between the genre of game. Yes. Like to be able to change the for like a melee or? mentality, being stuck with like square for light attack, triangle for heavy attack, blah blah blah. Whereas you know, in like a shooting game, having the triggers is more important because that's just where your mindset goes. Yep. No, yeah, you're gonna could... aim and shoot with triangle and square. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean. But I do like I just like any game that allows me to change the controller scheme no matter what it is. I agree. God of War let me do that because like it started up with like the L one R one and the way that I've always played like Kingdom Hearts it's you know X and Square and all that so I changed it and it worked for me. Mm-hmm. Second playthrough I went back to that but I don't know of any reason why game companies should make that something you can't do. Yeah, I think yeah. it's ridiculous. But at the same yeah. time I don't know enough about how much it takes to allow you to do that. So yeah, I suppose could so be a son of a bitch. Who knows? <laughs> you can do it with any computer game. You can do it most well, okay. I suppose it shouldn't be that difficult. Yeah, I can't speak on the subject. Yeah, I, I mean, think that's, I that's like the worst a, part. <laughs> I have a vague understanding of how it works, and no, I don't think it would be that difficult. It's just a matter it, of... It technically shouldn't. It's just retelling the game that instead of you hitting this key, this happens. Instead, you're telling it this key, this happens. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just... That's it. It's just a different map layout, more or less. Yeah, it, so you have to pre-build the code for whatever layout... No, 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 you just have to wants. pre-build the, boat, the, the code to say X equals attack, and then there's a different set of code to no, say any of these buttons. No, the other way buttons. around. Attack equals... No, 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 X as in a variable, not yeah. as a... Okay. So, and then, yeah, program a, a different set <laughs> there, to say there. Yeah. <laughs> any one of these buttons equals X. And the player selects which one of these buttons. That, that shit things. goes all all over my head. <laughs> like another game that's like that doesn't phase me at all. I'm realizing is Warframe. Like your guns are like triggers and. Talking to your mic. Sorry, okay. Jay. Fuck you. I'm blocking you completely. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. So, like with Warframe, you hit circle to melee. Yep. And then you use your triggers to basically aim and shoot. And then if you switch your weapon, it's still circle. Well. But I think the funny thing about that why it works so well is like when you're just in melee. With your gun out, even like Halo, it's B. PlayStation, it's Circle. Mm-hmm. There's like no difference. <laughs> well, so. I, I actually prefer the mentality of right thumbstick. Yeah, green thumb for melee attack. Yep, yep I agree. None. Because it's one of those well, things where like your thumb rests on there no matter what well, yeah, on the regular. So it's that just like on the game for me. yeah, yeah. With Warframe, it's definitely separate yeah. because melee is its own category. It's not so much just a quick. Right, bash. I have seen both both perspectives, but I, in my personal opinion. And I can usually adapt pretty well to just about anything. Lane. Nope, problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway. <laughs> Somehow we're just going to try to get it so it's only one person on camera. Yeah. We're just going to all weave in front of one another. Inadvertently yeah. we've just said to on, spy it's my, on it's my turn to talk. Hi. Uh, yeah. Watch the 
camera wasn't even recording. <laughs> no, it's working. Are you sure? Yep. Anything else big <laughs> announced? I saw. Uh, well, just on the topic of like the way the button mappings goes, have you get? Did you guys hear the whole uh, what the X button is actually called this week? Cross. They, according to Sony, it's the cross. It's, la- button. it's been labeled as cross on the uh, the actual circuit board. Yeah. Layout. It says it even in the in the game menu. Yeah, it's called the cross, it's, not the X. A, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a cross button. Xbox cross. tossed some shade on Twitter about yeah, it. Yeah, theirs too. are letters, <laughs> ours are shapes. So yeah, it's a cross. Yeah, yep. they they put po- they posted a, they posted a picture of like the thing that keeps us all together, and it was why like it between like, look like an X? PC, Xbox, Nintendo, and they're like the thing that keeps us all together is that X button. But no fucking nope. Sony on there. Nope. And I was like. <laughs> That's funny shit. <laughs> um, as you far mean the as plus sign, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is a plus sign. <laughs> um, you the Nintendo hashtag? bullshit. Yeah. <sighs> well, did you guys hear that? Uh, <laughs> did you guys hear that GameStop is going to close up to two hundred stores now? Yeah, oh, that's disappointing. I mean, they've they've had a rough year with pretty much anything goes. Yeah. Well, but here's the thing: fine. is that in order for them to keep up, they they're going to have to be able to supply everything and they can't they just don't have the capability it's i I give it two more years and gamestop's completely gone honestly i I would even say a year at this point it's horrible too well the digital sales have now actually crossed that threshold where it used to be like physical sales were up here they have now almost every developer and every carrier is a it's more than 50 percent is digital now and they tried to keep in the game with digital codes and everything but (sighs) I think the only way to like fix that would be taking it out of like Target or Walmart. If well, right. If the game developers really wanted to keep GameStop alive, you'd have to take it out of Target and Walmart. And well, stuff and like that's that. the thing. Like when they it comes to it, I mean, no, once again, don't. Amazon destroys everything because they had the deal where you could pre-order it. I'd get twenty percent off if I had Amazon Prime for a game. Yeah. So I'd get a game for forty-six dollars. Yeah. So even if I got the physical, which you could only get for the physical copy, not the digital versions, mm-hmm. they wouldn't give you the discount. So I was getting before I made that whole transition to digital because the convenience was just there. And when you have a four terabyte external, it just makes it a lot easier. But still preferred hard physical. I like having a hard, but I would understand the convenience of a digital. Oh, we both like it hard. <laughs> Good to know we're on the same page. <laughs> you, Mister Digital. <laughs> Sorry, I like it soft and squishy. That explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, uh, the whole thing about, like, companies would never let GameStop, like, outright be the only store to sell them. No, I because understand. the big thing about that, I remember a while back, I watched a thing, and, like, when a company makes a game, uh, and, like, let's just say you buy it from GameStop, GameStop and that company make a money but if you return the game and someone else buys it gamestop makes all that yeah money. yeah the company doesn't get a, a that's why you got you know? that's why you got like almost jack shit when you gave it back to them exactly but still i mean like that mentality of like they're not even getting anything and even though i bought it as used like you're just you're getting everything that's yep right that's kind uh, of it's bold. the same thing as well kind of like a goodwill concept yeah or like those little video game kiosks or those weird games like uh what is it top score that you go to high score yeah. high yeah. score where it's like, yeah, if you can come in and sell your games, we'll pay you better than GameStop will pay you, but they're making all the money off of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And by no means at that point does it even matter whether or not Are you're... Are there any of those around? Here? There's two. One, I don't even know if Chaska still has one, but... Chaska Chaska it's, still, still, it's still up and running here in Chaka. Yeah, it's just the one. I'm going to have to go there. There's a game I want to get for the Sega Genesis. Oh, Sega luck. Genesis? Okay. You still got one of those? No, but I would be willing we to buy getting, one. We are getting a... Um, well, there's the PlayStation version of the mini system yep. that's coming out, and there's now also a second. You mean version. the PlayStation Classic? Yeah, that's been out for a while. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, they dropped. They, it started at a hundred dollars, and it's now within like I think six months. It's been out. It's at twenty bucks. Yep. Yeah, you you can go to Best Buy. They got so many, yep. and every time wow. I go by it, I go, I own all these games. Right. I, I, like, yeah. That's the only like, problem. Ni- like Nintendo, I lost all those games because I don't have those anymore. But my Sony, I kept forever, and it's like, cool. I can get another copy of final fantasy 7 as much as i like to rebuy games i was like i literally don't need this one did they yeah. ever come out with a 64 classic no but there's still rumors they should well they're gonna they're gonna keep doing this oh wow. yeah they've made I mean, so much that, money now that even sega's on the train to do this yeah they're, yeah. they're gonna keep doing this i shit. will definitely buy give a me that fucking always. gamecube classic baby <clears throat> i love it i want a little tiny gamecube <laughs> it could still run those discs at that point oh my god that would be amazing now can the nintendo the newer one nintendo in, 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 no, I think it's all digital on these these yeah, remakes. Yeah, you, yeah. Basically, you just you just you get like twenty or so games 
on there uh, already. Like it's on the hard drive of the system. Now I don't condone it, but you can emulate it to play like three hundred games. That's but then, true. But basically, the thing is, is you're just emulating a PC yeah, bot anyway. Really so like the greatest thing about that, how everyone just knew it. It doesn't work. What do you do? <laughs> 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 Works. I, I love when they came out. It was maybe like four or five years I ago. I love it. Also, don't it's like the game. you're, you're not never supposed, supposed to. to. Yeah. Everyone. They came out. I with, got this. They came out with a study on it too. They were like, "Does it do anything?" And they're like, "This actually ruins your games." And went, "Yeah, it fucking worked, didn't it?" <laughs> yeah. It was the moisture <laughs> causing <laughs> rust. My favorite is like you blow in it. Doesn't work, then you pick up the whole system. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right. Yep. Every you're, time. You're outside, you're blowing your dad's car like tires out, like, does it work now? <laughs> That's how I it feel was. like I, if I would have stumbled on wording there, that could have came off really bad. <laughs> I, I, I saw oh, that. Yeah, it I, there, was a, there was a glimmer in my eye where it was like, don't oh, fuck don't this joke up. <laughs> I saw it coming. <laughs> Dicks, uh, jokes. You did <laughs> mention Final Fantasy. I also heard they have announced that there's going to be a classic turn-based style, yes. as well as so uh, yeah. So the way that so the way that it works is uh, <laughs> 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 sounds really good right now. Actually, Ooh, yeah. uh, the way that the classic mode works uh-huh. is essentially, and this I, is just I, from what I read. I didn't get to see it in action, but um, like the gameplay style is all exactly the same. It's just instead of you hitting like square or triangle to do like the combat in between the ATB gauge filling up is it'll do it automatically for you. So just like the old school where you just sat there and you waited for the gauge to fill up, Mm -hmm. it will do that. But just like what the new combat system is, it's like you're hitting square and triangle and doing some moves. They're not doing a whole lot of damage. They're just helping you fill the gauge a little bit quicker. Oh, okay. So it's basically taking that away from you if you want to sit back because the rest of the gameplay is pretty much... It's not exactly the same, so but it's very close to what it used to be. If we had our own conversation while they're talking. <laughs> That'd be really confusing. Because I would want to be a part of all the conversations. <laughs> hey, we can't all speak to things, but that's how it works. So, and I know. So I mean, grave. <laughs> I know, Matt. You seem to be a little bit excited about that because I know well, that's more your I style. Once I saw how they are actually designing it with that mentality, where it's not so much like you just start the game and just let them do their shit. Because mm-hmm. that's the right. reason why I started. 13 three times and never finish them because it's stupid oh i just yay battle's over with Woo. they did they did it that stupid auto battle thing that yeah. like it just takes me out of it i mean i would I, rather go yeah. to turn based and have to think about how everything goes and monitor shit like that because then it got to 10 where you got to see where you would fall in the actual like fight system you're like okay this is what i can get done before that thing lays in me but i mean then and then eventually got to 15, which I was entirely against when 15 first came out. I and then seen. I saw it and I played it and I'm like, all right, it's fine. I mean, it, I've run into that with plenty of other games. Hell, even right now, playing Greedfall. I've come to situations where I came across this big, fat, hag, guardian spirit monster in the swamp that's just dumping it around, barfing out poison. And I'm like, oh, poison gas. It's filling the area right around it. Okay, let me get out of there. As I stare at my two companions, as they're like, oh, <laughs> oh I'm dead. How could this have happened? It's like, well, that's because somebody built this game stupid. On well, 15, definitely had some of the best AI, I would say, in yes. games. So like, they were smart enough to jump the fuck out of the way, to back off and heal. It felt like you were actually playing with other people. But like having to go back to the mentality of like the Gambit system from 12, where you literally <laughs> had to go into this huge list. Okay, when you hit points drop below 20 percent, then you use this heal item. If the drop is only, only below 40 percent, then you use this heal. It's like I have to teach you different. to fucking do this. Then why did you just let me control Mega that? Man. <laughs> Fuck you at that point. It's just like, you're just wasting my goddamn time and hoping to God they do shit right. That's dumb. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I loved it. <laughs> I, loved I know you did. I, I see, the, like, how... It was a different style of gameplay, yeah. which, honestly, like, playing it again today, it's not as fun as it was when I was, what, fucking 11 or whatever it was when it came right. out. Like, it was. I wouldn't say it was easy. I grew up with 12 but, years of turn-based... I'm over here. Emmy over here. Kind of shit. Yeah. At the wow. time, I was off of Zelda. It was a much different way to be like, I had to strategize how they're already going to do things. It made it a lot more fun. The downside is, is with that system built in, like, once you have certain things played out, not that I was a great player, but they could just beat the game. Right. You know, that was a def- uh, downside of it. So. It was the difference between actively playing and micromanaging, and there are people who would enjoy either side of well, that. They, they have, like, in the in the remake of 12, they have, like, this, like, it's kind of like Bloody Palace. They have, like, this 100-level oh, fucking geez. thing. Where, like, uh, they were like, yeah, you can't just set up your gambits as per usual. You just fucking, you gotta change this shit. And I was like, well, that could be interesting, but I'm not good enough to do that. So <laughs> I'm not even gonna fucking bother. 
Well, if you're gonna do that, you think, make eight? it like a make it like a preset amount of things, and you can switch it to like, oh, I'm against this thing. Switch to this battle. Oh, yeah. hot swap to your cur- like oh. different loadouts, oh, basically. Setting, beta setting. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because I have seen games like that where it's like, oh shit, I'm up against this thing, and this thing requires a completely different mentality. So your question was, what do I think of turn-based combat? Yeah. Uh, I always right. find it interesting. I mean, hell, even look how we play D and D. Yeah, like no, turn right. you see your place in initiative. It's literally like the idea of like, okay, my my party's doing this, and I have to decide what I want to do in this amount of time, and then it just goes downhill quick. When it's like, I have this plan, just don't do, and you did it. Son of a bitch! Yeah, don't, move, don't, don't move! Don't move! You move! move. Great! Now oh. you're out of range of this, and I, I have change to heal these, and I can't heal you because you're done. I want to do AOE on the enemy before my guys get in there. All my guys are in there. Yep. Yep, yep. Or yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. And just remember, we will not bow down to any sponsors. <laughs> You're blocking yourself from the camera anyways. <laughs> they, actually, they actually announced that, uh, just to go back to it really quick, that uh, Monster is actually in Death Stranding. Uh, like what? the energy drinks. Like you drink there those. There are monsters things. in Death Stranding? God damn it. <laughs> monsters and babies. What monsters? is next? Monsters yeah. and babies. Are the monsters going to drink Monster and become monstrous monsters? Ah! Do they get wings? Yeah. So, swords? Talking on D&D a little bit, I wanted to bring this up uh, last podcast, because I don't know if you guys have heard of this game. Uh, it's called Solasta, Crown of the Magister. That's a lot so of basically, totally. uh, this, this game is based on open gaming licenses for D&D 5th edition. So it is based off of, like, Wizards of the Coast D&D. Uh, it's going to have very turn-based tactical combat, similar to what you find in, like, XCOM or Wasteland 3. Uh, XCOM. There's not a lot of gameplay on it because they're going to Kickstarter it and everything, but apparently... I forgot, that game's actually XCOM's turn-based. Yep. More or less. But that's also a tactical strategy. Yeah. Well, yeah I prefer that's... those games all the way back to what me and Lane always joke about is on the Sega Genesis, a game called Shining Force. Force. It was like a chess piece version of that where it's like, oh, you start over here, characters have so much movement speed, the enemies are spread out wherever... And you yeah. have to like coordinate. And you have to try it. to hunt them down. And I get love them. those kind of games. My and version was Advanced up. Wars. Yeah. 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 Adva- wasn't that for like the Game, game Boy? Boy. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah. like yeah. that game was fucking sweet. Yeah. Even yeah. all the way badass. back to Final Fantasy Tactics. Yep. Yeah. Tactics. Tactics. tactics, tactics and ogres. Ogres. It was Battle, difficult. Vandalheart. Yep. But apparently they might even have like certain types of like dice rolls in the game as well. Like they like the one talking about they say opening chests. They say, you, your smooth-talking rogue may have all the charisma points in the world, but could still fail a deception check thanks to an unlucky roll of the dice. Okay, so there is a little bit of random chance so, in there. So it seems like they're really trying to bring, like, actual D&D so to games as best as possible. I don't think D&D is something that can make its way to... Video it's the, games. I mean, Baldur's Gate what? is essentially oh my that. God. No, I, mean, I completely disagree. Well, it's game. it's the yeah. fact that it doesn't. No matter how how much you program into a video game, you're never going to have that much time. variability to like customize okay. it. I get what you mean. I guess what I'm what I'm looking forward to is the day and age where somebody's like, okay, so we have some of these things. We have D and D Beyond. We have Ark and Forge. We have all of these different things that we can do. We have Super Mario Maker. Oh, we have all the situations to be able to combine them together. They've yeah. kind of done that. Go in and you just—I mean, I, there's like things online, stuff like that. No, they make they, it like a true video yeah. game. Yeah, there was a PS2 Link's one. Awakening is RPG coming out with like a dungeon builder yes. as yes, well, but based entirely on D and D. Well, right, right. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. Okay, the fact yes. That we have not gotten there yet, and I hope to. God basically, a is virtual, basically a virtual game board. Right. Yeah. I think that so would that, work. Like, me it's or Nate it's as a gonna DM come. DM can just go in and build the map however they want. You can just pick like, okay, well, I want the background to be this terrain. It doesn't have to be like perfect, like three D terrain. It can be kind of like old top down mm-hmm. Nintendo. Imagine, terrain. imagine playing that in VR too. Yeah, oh. here, design your character from these little <laughs> things, and they'll show up as this cute little yeah. like Final Fantasy icon on there. And <laughs> hey, guys, sorry, but that big snowstorm is gonna call our final boss battle down, so we can't do it tonight. You, you want to hop on the fucking PlayStation and play yeah, it? Every, yeah. every yeah. sign on to this. You're yeah. goddamn right. There is. There, there's a bit of me though. Sorry to interrupt, but there's a bit of me that's like I would. I would prefer how we play it now. Oh, well, no. Oh, we, we all sit in a room together. And yeah, we yeah. All yeah. Just... But this is for, like, the mentality of people who are far away. Yeah, I understand yeah, that. Like, yeah. but, like, the fact that Jens doesn't want to come here because this place smells like cat piss. So, clearly, he's, I mean, it'd be easier for him to play from home and be yeah. able to do that. I, I mean, like, I, I can see both sides of it, but as far as, like, my personal preference, yes. that that's what I prefer. Oh, May I, not be that's all I'm, oh, I'm I'm absolutely with yeah. you. I agree. In my opinion, D&D is about the camaraderie, the getting together and hanging around. Or the not camaraderie and the fact of our campaign. But we're still getting together and hanging. <laughs> you're just soul. <laughs> I was talking. You're your a game. fish. Oh, well, uh, yeah. and but, yes, uh, I'm just a. You're fish soul. Now. You're a. Fish. <laughs> Damn it! I'm an actor. 
Axel, you've leveled up. <laughs> <laughs> You're now a trout. Uh, I can live with that. There's a game that's in Japan right now, and it's hopefully soon it will come to America, but it's called like, Grand Blue or something rather than that. Oh. It's, is it? It's D&D. The, it is fucking D&D. Yep, because the Grand Blue get the movies. Every character you want to be, and you can do... I want to say like 18 uh, different classes. And they gray them. and blue? Grand. Grand. Blue. G-R-A-N-B-L-U-E. Oh, oh, but it has like... Because there's an anime. Each, based off an anime. Yeah. And each of their classes or whatever you want has three subclasses where you can be different oh. styles. And you can switch. I think one of the Grand Blue oh. animes is actually on Netflix right now. I think so too, yeah. And it's a really good one. It is. But yeah, my buddy um, Corey, he's in the Japanese games. He was showing me this one and it was basically five different guys going and playing... And then all of a sudden, like three of them, are like, okay, we gotta head out, da da da. And then a few more people jump in. Like, you can play with randoms, you can play with friends. What the fuck? I like, can't move my oh. damn chair. What the fuck? I'm, I'm excited. And they have a fighter style game on the uh, PlayStation Network now, but it's a fighter style, you know, like, oh. combat. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of why I never really got into Neverwinter, because even though Neverwinter takes place entirely in the D&D universe, with all everything being based out of D&D universe stuff, I didn't like. I mean, at, at, and I was, don't get me wrong, at that point I was still riding the anger train from ESO and how much it was a disappointment in my mind. The fact that I saw it as a waste of money by the time I jumped on Neverwinter, I'm like, oh, it's the same goddamn thing. Cool. Yeah. I mean, a lot of MMOs definitely, they, I mean, they can feel the same depending on which ones you're playing. Yeah, I'd rather have a mentality where it's like, I jump into my Skyrim game and it's just like, oh, hey, let me send an invite to Ryan and Jay and Nate and Lane and, and you guys can just... Nay, hey, now we're all playing in a Skyrim style world like that. Why does it have to be? I mean, I want to take the massive out of the multiplayer online. I've never okay. understood why pe- why why game Sick developers haven't taken that GTA online of people. mentality because the GTA online mentality has always worked. Twenty four people on a server at most. At most, or Boom. you do a private or, server, or or you do a private server. Yeah. Like it does it doesn't make like a difference arc, you know? because or you I wouldn't give to be you literally a just private server in Fallout seventy six. You just fucking jump into you just jump into GTA. Yeah, you're not playing the main story, but you're literally playing the exact same fucking game. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it works. You get to do everything. In, I mean, how many hours did we used to spend playing that fucking game? Yeah. Which one? Mm-hmm. GTA Online. Well, are you talking about the times we jumped on and play? The times you forced us to play for filming? <laughs> <laughs> not the time spent filming. <laughs> Please don't bring that. What? Up. Don't bring up the machine. Uh, the unfinished machine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it will. Sorry, finish. I won't bring up the unfinished machine that you never finished. <laughs> <laughs> what summer there. is this? Is They're this our there. last summer? Ooh. 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 No, 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 no. It, Nate, that was last summer. Oh, <laughs> not the summer before. Ooh. Was it two and a half years of my fucking life just gone? <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. Twist. Thanks, Western Digital. I'm never buying one of your hard drives ever again. <laughs> <laughs> This episode is sponsored by <laughs> by not, not anybody them, but Western <laughs> Digital. By not anybody. <laughs> right, so in part by I'm drinking a mini game. Uh, <laughs> I already finished mine. My... Right <laughs> 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 to be perfectly honest with you. But yes, that's you know, I'd love to see a, a differentiation between the MMOs and just MMOs. <laughs> long haul. <I'm> tired <laughs> Sorry, of I just heard you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. man. I don't know how many times I fired somebody down, right? Like, what? A quarter <laughs> no, mile oh from the God. fucking end, and, like, finish line? Just turn around at uh, the finish line. Boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I remember day. the one time we were playing, and, like, I was in second place, and we were playing with, like, some random fucking piece of shit asshole. Jay. Oh, yeah. And, like, this. he gets to the finish line, I'm, like, I'm going to get second. And what does he do? He gets out He's of the car. He's waiting for it. He has an RPG <laughs> and waits. Literally. Waits and gets back in the car and crosses the finish line. <laughs> fucking dick. I got like sixth place after that. <laughs> I was so fucking livid. We would oh. always end our nights with that, no matter what it was. It was always oh. just long haul and call it a night. Yep, yep, and that was it. I loved that shit. Yeah, I could totally go for a long haul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they, because that was technically long haul two. We never yep. played long haul one. We never find it. I wonder if there's any more nowadays because we haven't played oh, online God, yeah. like. Forever. forever. Well, there's yeah. still people playing that. Since like the heist well, dude, update. That game is still. They just released a new update. We talked. We, ta- uh, we talked about it. Yeah, we just talked about it on the last Which podcast is briefly. Totally worthless. Oh, I loved it. I had a lot of fun in it. Okay, yeah. three cards. Who's got better hand? Huh? It's weird. It's like you're playing a casino game. <laughs> it's the three card Texas Stop Hold'em. Stop arguing to defend this stupid <laughs> game. <laughs> Lane doesn't like All it. Right. He can have an opinion. Shush. No. Shush. How dare you? Although Fuck Blackjack, you. I made. Oh, I love Blackjack. I made a shit ton of Blackjack. <laughs> I, just had, I always had too much fun just getting in like my the fastest car or the fastest bike and just drive. Oh yeah, just drive. Oh yeah, that's all you need to do. Game. 
I like stealing the uh, 16 wheelers with the fuel tr- tr- tank and seeing how far you can jump before you blow up. A cargo bob and pick up a tank? <laughs> that too. <laughs> that was I always like seeing Steven has entered I've the game and then you don't hear him for 30 minutes and then he flies over you with a jet. At that time. I'm sorry. Okay? When I'm just like flopping around in my tank, like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> test bomb is fucking chopper. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we're underneath it with our cars yeah, like, we'll catch you! Oh, no! Matt, close your eyes. I'm almost there. <laughs> Drop him on the train! <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you never played that in first person because you would have oh, thrown God. up. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't get motion sick. I don't get seasick. I don't get air sick. But at that one point, I'm like... <laughs> Guys, I'm going to have to log off for a couple minutes. <laughs> I need a fucking smoke. That's, I that's... kept shooting, hoping I'd shoot Jay out of the fucking <laughs> Stop it! That was the last that time we played. I think we just PS3. thought of a game we could play yeah. in there. Before they even introduced first person. Yeah. 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 Wow. That, they did that in the just when they came to the PlayStation 4, which when how long we were just talking about how long that's been out. Yeah. That came out within the first year of the PlayStation 4 being out. Didn't it first come out for PC? I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. First person. Yeah. Like, they raised it for PC, then first person. I think every, person. every part of that game came out for PC first. first. Yeah, Because PCs like were the only thing that could yeah. handle it until the PS4 came out. Yep. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're always ahead until they're not. <laughs> no, it's just Wait. fucking PC. They're just always ahead. They're always ahead. They are always ahead. <laughs> PC is not a master race. They're a more no, personal race. it is not a master race. I prefer PC. I cannot play on PC as much I'm as I'm an Ouya play. fan myself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I, I prefer my Ouija God. board. Skulls for the skulls! <laughs> blood for the blood god! <laughs> fuck horn! <laughs> Brought to you by Warhammer. <laughs> oh, man. What else? Uh, what else? Anybody so else? I want to bring up, um, yeah. or at least just pass on to our viewers, anybody who gives a shit. So, huh. if you give a shit, love you. I forgot the camera. Um, that uh, hey. I... Managed to burn through the game that we talked about last, or our last podcast, Control, uh, within three days, because I was so impressed and enjoyed it so much. Um, so if you're a fan of games like Fear or Infamous, this yes. game is just the Alan Wake, Quantum Break. Yes, it. Spoiler alert: they're all connected, which is kind of cool. Which they, means it's an anthology game. They just announced, I don't think it was today, but yesterday, that they are doing DLC for it that will have a crossover with Alan Wake. Yep, there's two DLCs coming out for it, which I'm excited about because have one of those Alan overall games. the game just, it never let me down. It, like, it was so simply designed, they didn't reach for the stars or anything. The fact that your gun can turn into any number of guns and you can have it set up how you want, um, as well as your powers are useful, but not so. there's not so many of them that you feel like you have too much you can do. I mean, left the ability to fly would just bring you up to a certain level, and you could hover there for as long as you wanted, or not as long as you wanted for a certain amount of time, and you'd slowly come back down. It was great for traversing area, getting a better layout for combat. Um, combine that with the air, with the dodge, which is just like an air dash, but you can do it on the ground or in the air. The catapult or the launch ability, which is your telekinesis, was set up in such a unique and versatile way where. You could actually see it highlighting things just that pass by your perif on be like this is what you'll pick up when you hit the button. And the other thing I enjoy about it is that when you when you activate it, you can actually see no matter where it is, you can target something across the room where she connects to it and starts bringing it over. The fun thing that I liked is that it immediately locks onto the nearest enemy or whichever enemy is in the closest proximity to where you're looking. So if I'm trying to knock out Ryan, I reach behind him to like that ring light over there. I can grab onto it and immediately hit fire, and it'll fire it from back I there into the back so of their much. head. Or even better, if he's a stronger enemy, I grab it, bring it, it knocks him over coming to me, and then he falls on the ground, gets right back up, and then I just launch it back at him. I think you guys would have a lot of fun with this. And then I even better, it's so like, much. oh shit, there's it. nothing in this room for me to pick up and throw. <laughs> yeah, the ground. She rips the <laughs> chunk of the fucking ground or wall out, and you actually see it. It's fucking fantastic. I mean, even fucking forget it. Fucking forget it. Fucking forget it. <laughs> Storyline was great. There was never a point. I mean, anybody who loves SCP that Mark plays or anything like that, it's got so SCP many SP. Yeah, yeah, SCP kind of mentalities where all these items it's have so like special wild. things. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's if you like any of those games that I just mentioned, it's definitely worth a try. And considering it's an indie game, I'm afraid it'll fall under the radar, but it's. We're done. pushing for it. It was it's, voted August's yeah, best game. Done. It was Good. best. It was the best-selling game in August. As well, so. it should be. Yeah, that's that's huge. Not, I mean, don't get me wrong. Not that there were a lot of huge releases by any means, but it's still big. I, it's been a it's long time since better. I've hit a game where it's been like, yeah, <laughs> here we go, <laughs> all in. <laughs> it wasn't too super tough. It was challenging and tough enough to the point where you realize that you didn't do it, that you failed because you failed. 
it was your fault. Yeah. And just overall, Fucking I felt Conrad. very rewarded by the end of the storyline. <laughs> what? Fucking Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> What a useless character. But yeah. For well, yeah, just like the actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I want to bring up before we... Uh... <laughs> Shit. We really got him. That's funny. Yeah. It, it wouldn't be a podcast without you breaking down. <laughs> Break it down, Nate. <laughs> Boobies. So, yeah, last thing I'm going to bring up. Thing I like. Matt, did you ever play System Shock? Oh, Back in the day. The, the predecessor to Bioshock. Unfortunately, I think I played... The first one on a very buggy machine. What about you, Lane? Did you ever play him? Well, that's unfortunate because I was really hoping you guys could talk on the fact that they announced Sy- System Shock Three and showed a trailer for it. I think if they were I never to, got to play him, so if they were to branch over the other ones and um, because here's the thing, they came they came from a mentality like the old Prince of Persia design games, where it's a side scroller, or no, I'm sorry, more like a like odd world kind of design where it's like here it is you walk down the screen and you go around the system screen system shock yeah system shock 2 is first person yeah it's very similar to bioshock okay. it, was, it was released for the 64 what am I? Oh. I don't know about the first, first one but I, I do remember that <laughs> good I'm yes happy. I'm so happy close my <laughs> mistake you dink <laughs> I just remember I've, I've watched a, a twitch a group of uh, twitch streamers play it and how like one of them this is my favorite game ever made and like watching, it's like, oh yeah, I can easily see how this is Bioshock. Yeah, well that's good. Before Bioshock came out, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Because the way I'm thinking of it, at like all the backgrounds and stuff were designed and based off of arc work by Giger. Mm-hmm. So I must be thinking of something else. That's all right. Oddworld was fun though. I did yeah. like Oddworld. Yeah. Did you ever get Neon Tasty? No. <laughs> the remastered version, uh-huh. I did. I mean, I I played Oddworld back. In the day. These games are just sheer, like just like Psychonauts played that. Derpy entertainment. Ago. They would they also got a sequel of that. That's coming, coming out. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. It was fun. I played most of it over a weekend with my friend, but Scorn. It was like it was a game that was announced. I don't know what's happened to it, but Scorn came like was announced. I think like last year or two years ago, and basically it was like we love Gears work so much, we're gonna create a video game using his work. Hmm. Wow, you guys couldn't have done that more in sync. <laughs> I'm sure we could have if we would have practiced a little bit. Three, two, one. Mm. Ah. Mm. I ah. fucked it up. <laughs> no, good good always, effort. Always. Ah. I just remember seeing gameplay on it, and it's like, just gone. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. that can It sucks happen. when that type of stuff happens. Yeah. Another game that kind of fell under the wayside. I know it came out, and I know you can get it on the PlayStation, and I just, every once in a while, it just kind of blows past my mind, and I want to pick it up to play it just because I have curiosity. I know it didn't do very well with Agony. No, you're talking about. <laughs> no. Where you're sent to hell and you have to move through hell. Yes, Seven I do. There's a fucking hell. No. I do as remember a, this. It's a lost yeah. soul. Shh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah, look it up sometime. I'll have to look that up. It's That's uh, it's amazing. That work, I think it's it's, it's kind of up. Yeah, I remember seeing gameplay on it. Yeah, hmm. it looked really so, interesting. Solid Be- A or B. Oh, game. Let's play. <laughs> because like also like the whole idea of like if your character dies. You just go to the next poor soul. Yeah. Oh and shit. It's just whole. The whole process is. It sounds just, different. This soul of yours is just trying to get out. Yeah. That's it. Hmm. Was well, there anything else anybody wants to talk about before I'm we wrap it up? Super excited that I only have a few more months until the Subnautica DLC comes out. I can't wait for Doom Eternal. Don't fucking touch me. I'm just excited for Death Stranding. So. I want to go home and play Borderlands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also. No, you were here to work and play D and D. Uh, Death Gambit. What do you think and, we're doing? Uh, Greedfall. I'm in okay. a heavy debate with those three games. I'm well, I'm not picking up anything Destiny related until because I was the guinea pig last time. I have <laughs> DLC. Of, yeah. I have I'm not doing it again. What are your choices again? Greedfall. Uh, uh, Greedfall, Hyperlip Drifter, or Death Gambit. <laughs> Hyperlip Drifter. Personally, I would say wait a little bit on Greedfall, but that's just coming from me. Just I'm not very. Well, far, basically, so. it's like Greedfall is like a sixty dollar game. Forty. Forty. It's actually that was, it was nice to be forty. Yeah. If it would have been sixty, I would have uh, said it's not worth it. Hyperlight Drifter and Death's Death's Gambit are both twenty. Yeah. So I, I would go with those. <laughs> so you could get both of them for, for forty bucks. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, like Hyperlight Drifter, if I recall, it's kind of like the whole like Zelda play style. Oh, okay. Like old hmm. fashion, where it's like, like that. way out here. Yeah. And then Death's Gambit just looks like a. Metroidvania Dark Souls. Ooh, cool. Try that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I bought that one. Also, I looked at that. And I think, I, also, here, another oh. game like it is Blasphemy. <laughs> another one I wanted to bring up whenever you're done. So, 
<laughs> he just no, whenever just you're done, please. Just looks like it's so Dark Souls it hurts, <laughs> yeah. and that's what why is, I want to play it. Does anybody else have any desire to try out Revenant? Yes. Yes, and you no. I've that. seen some stuff it on it. I am. It looks because of the idea. It's a three person. It's it's kind of like Destiny Strikes, but with the mixture of Dark Souls. But strikes. And, yeah. yeah, it's Destiny Strikes, but based in this entire world, the storyline. Every single one goes completely different because the enemies are different, loot layout is different. Um, yeah, I think I'm interested. Different what? <laughs> I think I'm interested then. Different like like there's each each map is designed as like this tree like path, but it's like you, this time you're going. This oh, path. sort of like a uh, Star Fox. Kind of. Kind of. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it seems really interesting. I just haven't. It's so just far it's been doing like, so goddamn well. I just remember seeing like a lot of like trailers for it. Yeah. And like every single one. It's, the like, worst this game part does is fun. it's goddamn trailers. And trailers are not uh, you know and usually people who do too many trailers it's like. What are you hiding? Yeah. yeah. In fact, the gameplay blows. See, let's look at a great example. That's what I love the about little bit I watched. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, here's this. Here's what we're doing. Here's this. Here's what we're doing. Here's actually this. And they explained everything. So I'm like, oh, that'd be cool. See, I saw that and I got really excited. And then I reminded myself, Anthem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, it's, 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 like, it's something I really want to like, I'm but so I don't. I'm so glad I dodged that bazooka round from yeah. Anthem. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good call, man. I so want to like that. I oh, still well. want to like go through it with everyone, hey, but I don't think we're what? gonna enjoy I, it. I hold out my hope that it'll be like a No Man's Sky, and unfortunately, I had to say wait two years, and it could be a great game. I, I but that's a long time. Ridiculous. Speaking of trailers, I recently saw the very first like my whole time watching YouTube. I saw one Greedfall trailer. Mm-hmm. Really? Only one, and that to me already is like, well, this game's got to be good. <laughs> <laughs> As they have no more money for marketing. <laughs> as funny as that sounds, it's like they've only released. They, I've only seen one trailer, and that's either a YouTube reading what I've watched, which is your live stream, <laughs> or just some of the trailers I've actually watched are Greedfall. Or there's like, let's just throw this at him and see what he does with it. Sure. Yeah. And just one trailer. I'm like, good on you, boys and girls. <laughs> good on you. You don't have to force it down my fucking face like anthem and uh, break my heart well before we keep going on that i think we'll call this episode here no i got more to bring up <laughs> can we just do a whole rant podcast on anthem <laughs> we could do it I'll, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> no. well thank you everybody for joining Spice. us for this week's podcast goodbye have a great rest of your weekend and by weekend i, I mean this came out on monday i so was fuck the you. nate like i was ryan and subscribe ryan. i don't exist that was matt that, that was, was the matt and this, this is the the jerk okay goodbye bye bye